young men of color come up from the gloom of national neglect you have already been paid for come out of the shadow of irrational prejudices you owe no racial debt to history the blood of our bodies and the prayers of our souls have bought for you a future without shame bright beyond the telling of it kwanzaa means access it means access to your soul. It means access to your people. Kwanzaa is like renewing your annual membership to community, to your family, to your culture, and most importantly, to yourself. Kwanzaa is expressed throughout the world now by people of African heritage who want to have that cultural connectedness. These are principles of what we're supposed to be doing 365, you know what I mean, and how we treat each other and how we look at the world. We did not petition or ask for permission to celebrate. We did it by Kuji Jakuli, a self-determination. Lead and Flint is proud of us. I'm Sophia Taylor and I am made right here in Flint, Michigan. Born and raised, rehabbing the hood and I'm proud of it. This is Gary Jones coming to you live from downtown Flint, and I'm made in Flint and proud of it. My name is John Wood. I'm made in Flint and proud of it. I'm Laura Panic. I'm making it in Flint and proud of it. I'm Molly Panic. I'm born in Flint. I'm making it in Flint. I'm staying in Flint, and I am proud hey, of it. Hey, Dwayne Younger, chilling out down here at the Buckham Alley Fest. Made in Flint and proud of it. Herman Marable, creator of Student of the Month, and I'm Maiden Flint and proud of it. 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 Hi, my name is Shandrika Moore, and I go to Evangelist Temple Church. Maiden Flint and proud of it. What's the best decision you can make for your business? Your membership in the Flint Area Chamber of Commerce is the best investment that your small business can make. The GCBA wants to encourage the young, lost entrepreneurs to get up off the bench, to join the team, and put their business ideas to work, to start filling those empty storefronts and start filling those empty businesses. Hi, I'm Ryan Ishu with Remax Real Estate Team, and Flint's future is looking so bright, I have to wear shades. Visit us online, flintareachamber.org. Your membership helps us develop a strong, united voice for the business community. Building a better Flint and Gen I'd like to call this meeting of the Flint City Council to order and ask uh, Madam Clerk to please take roll. Ms. Kroom? Here. Ms. Poplar? Present. Mr. Nolden? Present. Mr. Freeman? Present. Mr. Neely? Present. Mr. Sargenton? Present. Mr. Kincaid? Here. Thank you. Okay, I'd ask Councilman Sargentson if he'd please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please all rise. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we um, take our seats, can we just take a moment of silence to remember those uh, children and adults that were uh, killed in uh, Newtown, Connecticut? Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. I have a moment of silence. I have a moment of silence for Ms. Uh, Lenora Rowland who was very active in our city with uh, model cities. Uh, she was active in elections. She was just active all over this city. And uh, the city of Flint has lost a great, great activist with dignity and intelligence, Mrs. Glenora Rowland. And then also for Mr. John Handley. He was 102 years of age and he was active over at Hasselbring. Mm -hmm. um, they buried him today. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, Madam Clerk, are there any additional petitions or communications from city officials, Madam Clerk? No, Mr. President. <clears throat> right. Are there any additional communications from city officials, Madam Clerk? No, not at this time. Okay, this is a time set aside um, for the uh, public to address the City Council. Uh, Madam Clerk will call your name. Uh, please come to the microphone, give us your name, limit your comments to five minutes, and refrain from personal attacks on individuals or institutions. First to be called, Madam Clerk. Mr. Eric Mays. Mr. Mays. <clears throat> yeah, good evening. I came specifically to follow up on the last meeting as I watched and listened at the appointment process when it went down. And um, for me, that was something kind of funny and tough to watch. And then after the fact, I heard the communications from Mr. Wade here as it related to Lawler and um, the recommendation from what was called the interview committee. And it was two good points. It was points that was made that was good. Um, Nolan didn't vote for the recommendation. Sargentson voted on the second round. And um, I said to myself, after talking to a couple of people involved, uh, one person involved, I said, that probably was a recommendation of not the committee as a whole, but the record would show that it was a three to one, a three person vote. It was first stated by Minister Lawler that it was unanimous, and then he said something the record would reflect it was not unanimous. But whatever it was, to me, it was a debacle, and it kind of messed up some credibility in my eyes with some folks. And then I watched the second round. I seen Councilman Nolan vote for Leon, I think his name was Elamine. And then the second round, Councilman Nolan voted for Claudia Kroon. Well, we had knew through the whole process that Claudio Kroon was recommended by the resigning council person, Del Rico Lloyd, and I didn't think that Del Rico had done enough in the first ward to make a recommendation to carry that much weight. I know I talked to you, Scott, and I think you even stated in the media that that recommendation carried weight with you. And I say, you and Del Rico works at the UAW. I talked to Norwood, and I knew, and I had did my research, and I know that Ms. Kroon participates in certain committees and organizations. Ms. Kroon, I didn't hear it, but 
They reported in the media, or people reported to me that you made the statement that you wouldn't run. I know, Scott, you had made a statement previously that you wanted to select somebody who wouldn't run. I think that's a bad decision because the first ward deserves somebody who will run. Maybe, Ms. Kroom, you'll change your mind. People have the right to change their mind. But then at the same time, I think you should change your mind. And if you said something like you can't do anything about crime, you should make that statement and reverse it and say, I'll do all I can in order to try to do something or get resources as it relates to crime. And, you know, we can all make bad statements and we have to change them. So that was not a good statement to make. But you said something about you'll do something with blight. So you're in the public eye now. Those are things that I've witnessed. I believe, as I stand here, I talk personally with council people through that process. And I learn more and more about individuals. I take my hat off to Councilman Sargison. Councilman Sargison, from the first time I talked to him, I believed him just like I believed his dad. That eighth ward Sargison seat, you can believe what he said. It's, to me, he's a straight shooter. He's the straight shooter on the council. Jackie Poplar, straight shooter. And you, she gonna say what she say, whether you like it or not. I like straight shooters in politics. I don't like slippery politicians. To me, Josh Freeman is a straight shooter. I have reservations when it comes to Nolan, Kincaid, Lawler, Neely, Wake Hill, he just don't answer the phone. He's absent. He's absent now. And I'm very serious about the decisions that this council make and what they do. Scott, you were a leader in this council. I'll talk to you a couple of times. We're very serious about the first ward. You didn't attend the forum where the first ward people were there, and they expressed their will. Ms. Kroon, you didn't attend the forum, and they expressed their will. Nolan Sargentson and Lawler was there. I mean, Nolan, Lawler, and Neely was there. They seen it, they witnessed it, they heard it with their own eyes. This council in that vein, and there are some exceptions, that's Josh Freeman, Sargentson, Ms. Kroon, and Ms. Popular. Now, that don't mean I always agree with you, Ms. Popular, but I know where you're coming from. But when it comes to those three councilmen, Nolan, Lawler, and Neely, I get a little confused. I don't think that they're the straight shooters that I want to know in politics. And when I find that out, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell it from now on. And it makes me say that this council when you look at the majority vote, it reminds me of Governor Snyder. Right now, Governor Snyder is not listening to the will of the people in the legislature in Lansing. I know you'll say some up. Please. I, I know it's, it's going to really you want me to sum up when I'm not patting people on the back. But the will of the people all across the state is being talked about. And this council, to me, remind me of Governor Snyder and the legislature. They didn't listen to the first ward at all. Not the will of the people, but it's kind of hypocritical when you want the governor and the legislature. And Scott, is nobody really here in the room. And I know the council can give leeway, but I want y'all to learn from this. That debacle and what's been done as it relates to the will of the people. And it, it's the same. It's the same on this council as when we go in droves to try to get the governor and the legislature to listen to us. We voted no on Public Act 4. They say forget the will of the people. They've enacted another one. 
regardless of what the people say, this council right now, I'm labeling you, and I want everybody to know I'm labeling you because I'm down here for 30 years. Ms. Kroon, they gave you the nod. They say you attend council meetings. We've been attending them for 30 years. I was at the top on that. People fixing to support me, I'm going to run. We don't know if I'll win or lose, but I'm going to run. But the will of the people must mean something. This council must listen better. You must treat us better when we come to you, not just at election time. My point has been made, and I'm going to say as we talk black and white, the three black council piece, persons, Nolan, Lala, and my friend Neely, who is a church member, that was a tough process. I learned a lot. You guys are suspect to me. Sergeantson and Josh, nothing to do with black and white. I appreciate your honesty. Miss Popular, from the door, you were wrong. You came out early, you stuck with it. Scott and BB, Nolan, they didn't show their hand, they just politicked. Josh told me, he said, I'm committed to Croom, but I'll watch your votes and see what happens. And I talked to Neely and Sergeant, I mean, Neely and Lawler and BB, and guess what? It was a slippery conversation. I don't like slippery politicians. I like straight up. Scott, you wasn't slippery, but all my conversation told me, you didn't give a doggone what the people of the first ward was saying. Your mind was made up. You was caught up in the UAW politics with Derrico Lloyd. Some people say you had something to do with him getting out there. Ms. Kroom, I know you sit on the committee with others who went out there and say we need a black at Region 1C. But I'm gonna tell you this about the UAW and Region 1C. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I did stuff at Region 1C with Stan Marshall and Danny Sain when politics was politics. When INS was with Regal, we went to Washington and passed legislation that was stuck on the dime. 26 weeks unemployment extension. We must not forget, and Scott, I'm going to tell you, just like that proposal two went down and now we're in a right to work state, because of the decisions you guys make connected with the city and the UAW, if you ain't smart and sharp, you lose your battles. We won our battle with Proposal 1. Whatever the reason is, Public Act 4, that's what we participated in heavy. Y'all better get it together. UAW, City of Flint, people who hold in both seats. Del Rico is young enough to be my son. I watched him get appointed. As a matter of fact, I recommended him when Johnny Coleman tried to come over here and get it. Him and Donna Poplar now. Eric, you've more than exceeded the time to sum up. Please. And when I sit down and y'all go through your agenda, this meeting will be over, I bet you, by 6.30. Thank because you. I've asked y'all to start back up committee meetings. This is a part-time job. You work at the UAW, but right now we're in the emergency. This is a full-time job, but being done by part-time politicians. God bless you. We are on the campaign trail, and I hope the people speak. Ms. Kroon, consider two things. When you get that experience over these 10 months, don't let nobody hold you to it. If you do good and beat them out and show them up and do better for the first war, you change your mind. And if you want to run, you run. You make a statement, and you tell the public, I'll do the best I can to try to stop crime and murders, not only in the first war, but in the city of Flint. And I'll change my mind, and I'll help you and tell you what I know. Anything short of that, I'm quiet as a church mouse, but we looking at everything moving and might go back on the air to talk about it. This is not gonna be a easy process for certain folks to get reelected. Scott, the leadership you provide between now, August, and November, whether you run or not, y'all not nice to me, and you prove 
you don't care for me because you've never voted for me in 160 something rounds since I'm Budsman. Eric, please, I've given you more than ample time. Please sum up. Consider it summed up, consider it wrapped up, and if we have to get it five minutes at a time, or if we have to go back on the air with the Eric Mays show, we're gonna hold this council accountable. We're gonna tell about the personalities who's straightforward, who know what they're doing, and who don't know what they're doing. And we're finna to try to put y'all back to work. Don't take off and slack off just because we've got an emergency manager. The activists like myself and others, we're getting tired. We need y'all to help do some work. Y'all ain't at the meetings we at. You ain't doing some of the stuff we doing. But guess what? Y'all sitting in them seats getting the glory and ain't doing the work. God bless you. Thank you. Mr. President, may I um, speak? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mays, I stand by my statement that I can't do anything about crime. If the Flint City Police, the Sheriff, the State Police, and the FBI can't do anything about crime, I don't think I can. As I stated before, I lost my oldest grandson to crime. And surely, if I could stop crime in Flint, no one else after him would have lost their lives. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Our next speaker, Madam Clerk? That is the conclusion of our speakers. Okay. That concludes our speakers for this evening. We have no... I'm sorry? We have... Um, Barbara? Well, if, if you would like to speak, you can come to the microphone, give us your name, and limit your comments to five minutes, please. Thank you. My name is Barbara Griffith Wilson, and I stand before you to encourage you and ask you to join me in the fight to assure that the citizens of Flint can at least call downtown to the water department and get an <clears throat> extension, or at least pay half of the money, and get an extension where they have to pay the rest of the money. This week alone, and today is just Tuesday, but from last Thursday until today, I've had 15 people lamenting over water bills. I've explained the process to them. I've explained to them that it takes, that if you don't use any water at all, that if you never take a bath and don't drink any water out your faucet, it's $53.78. I have a young lady whose water was turned off and she has five kids. We've been scrambling to help her get the money. I have talked to Mr. Croft, Mr. Croft. I was told by somebody that, you know, if you call him early in the morning, you get him. And we've talked early in the morning, but yet nothing has happened to benefit the people. I can't, you can't change the amount of money that they charge for the water. But what you can do is you can join me in asking that we meet with the emergency manager, Mr. Croft, and his, whoever works with him to talk about at least alleviating some of this pain that's being felt by the people of the city of Flint for water. This is, to me, it's atrocious. I, agree. I have, I usually get calls for, for consumers and water but I am getting far more calls for water than I am for consumers. And my agency is T.R. Harris Community Development Corporation, and you guys know I'm an activist. And I, I, I advocate for my clients. I advocate, I do everything possible I can do to try and get them, if I don't have enough money, I have even gone into my own bank account and paid water bills. Because I cannot, it's, it's almost, I had Deborah Holmes come in my office the other day and tell me, you can't let these people make you have a stroke. You can't pay everybody's water bill out your own account. You know, so I want some help. And I'm asking the council to at least join with me to try and get a meeting with, with, Robert, with Howard Croft, the emergency manager and the city manager, so that we can do something. It's, it's time out for us going around in circles with people, tell them to go over here, send, send them on wild goose chases. It's time out. And another thing, and I'm gonna sit down, you should not have to be a city council person 
in order to get something done for the people of the city of Flint. You shouldn't. You sh if you're an activist, if, you are, if you're an activist and you advocate and you help pay bills and stuff, you should be able to sit down with the people in charge to get something done. You should be. I should not have the title of Councilwoman Griffith Wilson on me in order to, to negotiate for the people that, that come to me. I know people call y'all on the telephone and tell y'all what the problems is, but believe me, for every one person that calls you, three or four calls me. And let me tell you this right here. People hand my, my private home number out. People call me at 12 o'clock at night. Can you please help me? So I just want you guys to join with me asking them for a meeting. That's the least we can do. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Councilman Wayhill. <clears throat> yeah, um, thank you, Mr. President. Barb, I'll be happy to set up a meeting with Howard and Mike Brown and anybody else that would come, and I'll be there as well. I have all of next week off because Mott's closed, and so I've got some availability. And uh, you and I can talk after the meeting and, and pick a couple days and times that would be good for you and anyone else you think should be there. I'm happy to help set it up. And I, I will just add a comment that, um, you know, I think people think that city council members always get their calls returned and emails returned from folks at City Hall, but I would say uh, probably about 50% of the time I don't get a response either. Um, and that's certainly not to justify anything, it's just letting you know that the customer service, depending on who you talk to, is, is sometimes quite deplorable and certainly the citizens deserve better. Thank you. Thank you. And Barbara, you know, you and I had this conversation yes. the other day and I assured you that I would assist you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our speakers for this evening. We, we have no resolutions, um, but we do have some appointments on this evening. And appointments to the Board of Review, um, 121088.1 in the first ward. Councilwoman Crooms. Oh, I'm sorry. You're moving it. Can we move them all together, Mr. President? I don't have a problem with that. If we want to do them all together, I mean, Madam Clerk, do yes. we need to keep track? We, well, I think if we move them all together, but I think it would be appropriate if we mentioned the name and the ward. Uh, just as a matter of record, but before we do that, if I could make mm -hmm. a point of order. Um, I believe that um, when Mrs. Crooms was appointed council person, she appointed Mr. George Harrison to the Board of Review from the floor. And we later did a resolution the following day. And I guess uh, the following day, Mr. Harrison also indicated that he could not serve, unfortunately, although he very much wanted to do so. And Mr. President, I believe that so that we can keep the record straight, okay. if we could right. do something with that particular resolution in terms of rescinding it or okay. however you'd want to do it. Yeah, let's... Um, I make a motion to reconsider um, resolution 120385. It's been moved. Is there support? It's been moved and supported. Discussion? Roll on uh, reconsideration of the appointment. Uh, from last Monday. Ms. Kroom? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yeah. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. So uh -huh. the next motion should be to rescind the appointment, is that? Yes. A motion would so be in order to rescind support. the appointment? been moved and supported. Yeah. Discussion? Roll. Ms. Poplar? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroon? Yes. To rescind? Yes. 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 Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> The vote is eight yes, zero no to rescind resolution one two zero three eight five. Mr. President, I'd move one two one zero eight eight point one through ninety three point one. Okay, Madam Clerk, do you want to read the names I'll support, yes. I'll that as well. yes. of the appointments and the wards that they're representing? Yes, 
Yes, before you do that, can I make a, a small indication of a correction that needs to be made with one zero, what, I'm sorry, 121092.1. One, one, uh, Eugene Campbell, in, in the heading that says Ward 6, it should be Ward 7. It's, it's a type of error, right, right. but the resolution, the resolution is corrected. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We, we apologize for that. that. No, it's fine. I just want yeah. to. Uh -huh. Okay, if, if I might proceed <clears throat> for Ward 1, recommended for the Board of Review, Valerie Leslie. The recommendation is by Council Person uh, Kroon. Ward 2, recommendation from Council Person Poplar, Carolyn Hawkins. Ward 3, recommendation from Councilman Nolden, William Journey. Ward 4 is already completed. We don't have to worry about that one. 5 is completed also. The recommendation for Ward 6 from Councilman Neely is Chris Del Moroni. The recommendation for Ward 7 from Councilman Way Hill is Eugene Campbell. The recommendation from Ward 8 from Councilman Sargentson is Lewis Allen Griggs. Okay. They've been moved and supported. Any separations? Roll on the appointments, Madam Clerk. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Mr. Wayhill? Yes. Mr. Sargentson? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. Ms. Kroom? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no. Okay, before I ask council members to speak, I'd like to make the announcement that Councilman Lawler uh, does have the flu this evening, and that is the reason that he is not here. Uh, he indicated me. that he could be here the other day, but um, come down with the flu. So uh, that is the reason why Councilman Lawler is not here. Mm -hmm. Our next uh, regularly scheduled Flint City Council meeting is for Monday, January 14th at 5.30. And uh, I had the clerk put together a a meeting agenda for all of us through the first quarter of the year. And let me just read them. Uh, Monday, January 14th, Monday, January 28th, Monday, February 11th, Monday, February 25th, Monday, March 11th, and Monday, March 25th. And those meetings will all be at 5.30. And we just went through the first quarter of the year um, at this time. Are there any council members that would like to address the city council this evening? Councilman Neely? Yeah, just a quick, I want to make sure that we got this uh, a memorandum from the chief legal officer, Mr. Peter Bade, as it relates to resolution. Uh, I just want to make, I just want to denounce uh, what it says here publicly because as it talks about our ability to make appointments or to make resolutions, I think this issue was resolved in the circuit court with Judge Netiquette before that we can do resolutions and we can <coughs> make uh, appointments and or other things. Uh, it, was, it was adjudicated and, and so his recommendation says that we could not have done what we do, did last week on the floor and he uh, referenced the charter 4-6-2, four, four I'm sorry, 4, I went to the dentist today so I'm, I'm trying to get it out, 4602. I don't think it speaks to that, but I think in Judge Nethercourt's court, Scott, you and right. I and Jackie was on council then when this had to go before the circuit court, and they did speak to the issue and rule in our favor that we can make uh, those type of uh, referrals and recommendations and appointments um, uh, to the best of, to the best of our ability for the residents of the city of Flint. So I just want to make it public that uh, that we should denounce this memorandum that came from the chief legal officer. And, and just so that council members know that when this issue came up, um, I and particularly um, Inez uh, had met with Ed Kurtz. I couldn't be there to talk to him, and so she went down and talked to Mr. Kurtz, and he concurred that we could go ahead and make recommendations to the Board of Review, and that's why we did them tonight. So uh, that, that came after Pete's letter. Okay. So. But, but I agree with you. We, we do have the authority to, to make those appointments based on um, Judge Nethercutt's ruling. And they, it's not something that has to be done prior to our meeting. But once we do them, they need to get to the attorney's office 
relatively soon. Councilman Wayhill. Um, question to you, Mr. President, or maybe more to um, Clerk Brown. You said that Mr. Kurtz indicated that we could make recommendations. Is he treating these as, as simply a recommendation that he can either approve or deny, or is he accepting these? No, he's, he's accepting these. We, you know. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. No, but he did indicate, you know, just let me take it a step further. He did indicate that if council members couldn't come up with appointments by the 20th of, of December, that he would be prepared to make those appointments, so just because they want to make sure that those positions get filled. I should indicate, though, that just for clarity and for the record, <clears throat> that this memorandum from the chief legal officer, though, came after my meeting with Mr. Kurtz. Right. Because to Mr. Kurtz's credit, okay, he could see that it was a council appointment. But again, it is my intention tomorrow to send a, a, another memorandum to the chief legal officer, Mr. Bade, pointing out to him the uh, order that was issued by Judge Nethercutt, which was prior to Mr. Bade's arrival as city attorney, and he may not be aware of it. But again, council was exercising its rights under the charter. We did not violate the charter. We didn't violate anything. But according to his interpretation, and this is per the memo, because the Board of Review has financial implications, it's his feeling that the appointment should be made by Mr. Kurtz. But again, to Mr. Kurtz's credit, because he committed that, okay, you can go ahead with counsel and do whatever, I think this is how, how all of this came about. But I have to give Mr. Kurtz credit that he wanted you all to go ahead with it. Okay, anyone else? I, I would just, oh, Council, Councilwoman Poplar. Go ahead, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to wish everyone in this building and those that live in the city of Flint a very, very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from my heart to yours. And I pray that our city will rise up, stand up, get up, and be the city that it once was. And I'm asking everyone in this city to please hold on because God is not done with us yet. And I know we received our new property taxes and they are awfully ugly for some of us, including myself, that cannot afford these extra $200 at the end of the year. But it's gonna be okay. So I just wanna thank you city of flint for being the people that you are and we do have some magnificent people in this city they may not be highlighted the way they should but god bless you thank you thank you i just also want to echo um and wish everyone a happy holiday and a safe holiday and uh, i look forward to uh, all of us getting back together after the first of the year thank you there's no further business before the city council. We are adjourned. young men of color come up from the gloom of national neglect you have already been paid for come out of the shadow of irrational prejudices you owe no racial debt 
into history. The blood of our bodies and the prayers of our souls have bought for you a future without shame, bright beyond the telling of it. Kwanzaa means access. It means access to your soul. It means access to your people. Kwanzaa is like renewing your annual membership to community, to your family, to your culture, and most importantly, to yourself. Kwanzaa is expressed throughout the world now by people of African heritage who want to have that cultural connectedness. These are principles of what we're supposed to be doing 365, you know what I mean, and how we treat each other and how we look at the world. We did not petition or ask for permission to celebrate. We did it by Kuji Jakuli, a self-determination. What's the best decision you can make for your business? Your membership in the Flint Area Chamber of Commerce is the best investment that your small business can make. The GCBA wants to encourage the young, lost entrepreneurs to get up off the bench, to join the team, and put their business ideas to work, to start filling those empty storefronts, to start filling those empty businesses. Hi, I'm Ryan Ishu with Remax Real Estate Team, and Flint's future is looking so bright, I have to wear shades. Visit us online, flintareachamber.org. Your membership helps us develop a strong, united voice for the business community. Building a better Flint and general. Leading Flint and proud of us. I'm Sophia Taylor, and I am made right here in Flint, Michigan. Born and raised, rehabbing the hood, and I'm proud of it. This is Gary Jones, coming to you live from downtown Flint, and I'm made in Flint and proud of it. My name is John Wood. I'm made in Flint and proud of it. I'm Laura Paddock. I'm making it in Flint and proud of it. I'm Molly Paddock. I'm born in Flint. I'm making it in Flint. I'm staying in Flint and I am proud hey, of it. Hey, Dwayne Younger, chilling out down here at the Bucket Valley Fest. Made in Flint and proud of it. Truman Mirable, creator of Student of the Month, and I'm making one